In this video, I'm going to cover how to use AI in Excel and then put them together. I did a video on this a while back and it did super well. You guys seem to love it. So this is kind of a, a part two to that video. I'm going to do some new use cases and walk you through the entire thing. So if you're brand new to the channel, my name is Elliot. I'm an AI entrepreneur. I'm currently running ManyFlow AI, which is my main AI development company. I'm also a content creator posting videos on YouTube here and an AI educator. So you can check out my free school community down below. I'll have that in the description. Just click the link and join and all the template and the, a little bit of code that's going to be involved in this video is all going to be available completely for free in my free school community. So check that out, download the stuff, work alongside with me, however you want to do it. And yeah, with all that being said, let's just dive into the video. So jumping right into it, I have my Excel spreadsheet here. I do have some sales data, customer name, email, things you've seen before, product quantity, unit price. Now, it doesn't entirely make sense. Someone probably wouldn't order nine tablets, but for this video, we'll make it like it's a distributor. Or we'll make it make sense. And what we're going to do is actually just format, organize, analyze all of this data. So what you want to do is make sure you're on the Office 365 version in order to have the Copilot feature up here. Copilot is basically Microsoft's own large language model, and they did an integration with Excel where you can put in Copilot, have it all already in Excel. Super powerful tool, really fun to use as well. So make sure you're on the Office 365 version and make sure your auto save is on. It will prompt you to put that on before you use Copilot. So once you have that set up, once you do have Copilot here, what we can start to do is actually start playing around with our data set. So once I highlight any data here, I have this little pop-up that happens on the, the right side and it's called Copilot. So if I click on it, it kind of gives me some suggestions here that what I can do with this data set. And we can click on chat with Copilot, which is also the same thing as clicking on Copilot itself. And then here we get some, some suggestions as well. So we're going to go ahead and suggest a formula column. We'll click on that. I'm going to say working on it. And then our data is actually going to highlight, as you can see, it's got some color to it, meaning it's analyzing our data and working with it. Scroll down here, it's saying, oh, we can add a net price. So let's see how that looks. We can hover over insert column and we can see that it's taking our unit price and then it's giving us the multiplying it by the discount. So if I insert the column here, we can see it looks like this quantity times the unit price times the discount or divided to get the percent, you know, whatever it's in the formula there. And we can see that here, this one has a 20% discount. So it gave us the net price. This one has a zero. So it's the same price. This one has a 10% discount, so it's 10% off. And it just did that in five seconds without us having to create that formula, right? I didn't want to actually create this formula. It would have taken me a little bit longer than three seconds. So we had AI do that for us, suggested it, looks great. And we can also just undo it as well and it'll delete it. So that was a nice little thing that it did for us. Uh, maybe I also want to split this customer, the customer name here. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to say, please split the customer name into a first and a last column. And I'm going to say what it does. Now here it's suggesting for the first name, we use a text before function and we use a text after for the last name. And we can go ahead and insert the column as well. And here we get our first name and last name. And it used those exact formulas up here. Perfect. So now that we've added a little bit to this, maybe we want to highlight something here. Maybe for example, the, the people who ordered keyboards or something. Actually, I believe that might already be a suggestion. I was playing around with it earlier. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to say suggest conditional formatting. Here we get some suggestions. And right here, yeah, because I played around with this earlier. Highlight cells equal to keyboard in column product. Select on that. And if I scroll down here, we can click on apply. And now everyone who ordered the keyboard is now highlighted. It actually created that rule. If I go to conditional formatting, manage rules, it is now in here. So that's pretty sweet. And again, this is fully dynamic, right? If they ordered a laptop, it is no longer highlighted. Okay, and maybe what we wanna do here is get something a little bit more powerful here. What if, for example, I want to highlight my, my data and I wanna say, create, a pivot table with a chart on the product categories with the sum of total price. Maybe I could have explained that a little bit better, but we're just going to be a little bit 
vague and see what it does for us. So I'm asking for a pivot table and a chart on the product categories with the sum of total price. Let's see how it understood that. Here is that chart. This is a pivot chart. It seemed that it did not do the pivot table. So I'm going to click add to new sheet here. Oh, it did right here. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So if I zoom in, our headphones was a sum of 51,000, 48,000 on the keyboards, laptop, monitor, smartphone. It did that perfectly. And then we have a nice chart to visualize it. So you can play around with this a little bit more if you'd like with a much maybe more dense data set. Maybe there's a lot more columns, more complex data. And then Copilot will do almost anything. It'll create the formulas, it'll highlight things for you, create charts, pivot tables, pretty powerful tool that they added. And you can go to this little plus sign here as well. And you can click on view prompts. And this will give you kind of some recommendations here. It's like, okay, help me create a travel itinerary, set up data validation, go to task. You can say, okay, I want to create something, understand something, edit something. If you want to create something, track a project, learn something new, extract the month. And if you just click on them, it'll basically just input it here so it can help you start your, your query. So that's kind of a quick breakdown of Copilot in Excel. Really fun. Definitely recommend playing around with this more. I don't want to make this video too long, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to the next use case. So this one's going to be a little bit more complex. There's going to be a little bit of code involved. They're going to use mate.com, but don't worry. In my free school community, you'll have access to this. You just download it, and you don't have to actually code anything or make any integrations. So for this use case, what I want to do is send an email responding to this. Hey, I'm looking for an advice on the best AI chatbot solutions for my e-commerce store. Hey, I need help figuring out the right AI tools to automate my customer support. These are all inquiries that maybe came from a lead form or something, and they're all stored in Excel. Maybe we want to respond to this and book an appointment, book a discovery call with the user, and we can select which ones to actually respond to and click on send. So this is going to be the code here. I'm going to go to the developer tab. If you don't have this tab up here, go to the file. You're going to scroll down to options. You're going to look for customize ribbon and turn on developer. Just check that box. Click on OK. You're going to want to go to Visual Basic up here. Then you're going to get this screen here. What I want to do, or what you're going to want to do, is right click, insert module. Once you have your module, you're going to want to paste in this code. You'll already have it if you download the worksheet. But what this code is doing is basically just sending the selected data to a webhook. So the only thing that you are going to have to change here is the webhook URL, which is this right here. This is for my personal webhook. So make sure to change that to your webhook. So we're going to jump over to make.com here. I'm going to show you exactly how this works. So here's the make.com scenario. You'll be able to import this. You just go to the three lines here, click on import blueprint right here, and you'll have this entire scenario. So the first thing here is to get that webhook URL. So you just configure the webhook, copy address to clipboard, and that's what you're going to want to paste into the actual code here. I'm going to make sure to set it right here. So you put that there, and that's all you have to do for the code. Everything else is done. Now, if I actually right click and run this module only, and I go to Excel, I go ahead and select maybe these two values. And I did use my, my spam email here for everything because we're going to be sending out an email. So I'll get, I'll receive everything. Click on send. It's going to say send to record successfully. I go back to make. You can see now that I have an output with one bundle and some data. And then here we can see these two collections here. So we have the first one, name, email, the customer question, same thing here. We have these two collections in our array. Here what I did was set an iterator, and I gave it that, that data. The data here, I dragged it directly in here uh, just to iterate because, as you can see, we have two collections. Well, right now it just shows us one. But when you're running multiple and you're selecting multiple checkboxes and you want to send multiple people multiple emails at once, uh, we want to make sure to iterate that so it can run one, two, three, four times how many people we selected. So we put the iterator here, very simple, just put the array. Next is actually setting the times for the bookings. So I used a make.com function here, it's built in. This is to determine the start time. So we're looking at now, this is a built-in function, taking the current date and time as of absolutely right now. And I'm just giving it this format here for the API. Then I'm taking that variable here and I'm referencing it right here. To format, we're adding seven days just to get that week's schedule. So we're taking the time that it is now, adding seven days so that now our 
our availability is for that entire week. So we can make this two weeks, three weeks, one month, but we're feeding this into AI. So I don't want to make it too large. I want to make the, the payload rather small, I guess. So I just did it seven weeks or seven days, sorry. Okay, and then this is the kind of the important part here. We're making an API call to cal.com. Cal.com is just a great platform to integrate with your calendar. So you make a cal.com account, very easy, very simple. I have a 30 minute meeting here. It's just kind of, if I click on it, you can see this is just, you can book in with me for 30 minutes, right? I don't really use this, but for APIs, it's very, very powerful. So we want to call this via API. So we go here. This is the endpoint we're calling. It's gonna be a get request. This is the, the headers authorization bear. I don't have a space this time. Usually you do have a space, but for this API, I don't have to have a space bear API key. Now to get this key, we just go here. We go back to cal.com and go to settings. You're going to look for API keys. And then you just add one here. You can add an expiration date. You can call it however you want to do it. Click on save and you're going to copy that key and you're going to place it right after bear. And then you're not going to do this as a, you know, a, typical, a typical post request. You're not going to add a body type. This is going to be directly, strictly query string. So we type in start time like this, end time, event type ID, and event type slug. So for the start time and the end time, those are the two, the two dates and times that I put in here, the start time and the end time. The event type ID, this, this ID here, it's very simple. You just go back, go to your meeting here. And you want to take in this, this ID from your URL, paste that in right here. And then you can just name this slug here, click on save. And again, right. If you were to, if I was just to run, let me run it real quick here. If I was just to run this webhook all the way to the HTTP request. If I go ahead and go back to Excel, click on, let's just do one value send. Okay. We can see that I get this output here, data. And these are all the available time slots from the calendar that I picked. See in everything here, we're feeding all of these availabilities to, to AI and it'll find that correct time for us. So I'm gonna reconnect this here. This is the prompt that I gave it. So you are an AI assistant that writes professional friendly emails to prospects to encourage them to book a consulting call. Here's the customer name. I dragged it from our iterator. Customer questions, here's what they said available times data. So I, so I gave it that entire JSON string here. So it now has available to all the availabilities, some rules for the email nine, you know, make it nine to five, no, no weekends, weekdays only. Here's the data again. And then some output format sign is Elliot. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Save. And then I have a Gmail module here. Here's the email from our iterator. Subject, I just hard coded this just to keep it simple. Thanks for reaching out. And the content is just the output from our OpenAI step. Cool, so let's just run this in full effect here. I'm gonna click on run, go to Excel. Let's do these, let's just change it up. Let's do these last three, click on send. We can see mate.com is running. Okay, perfect, should go to three. Three and three. Cool. And now let's check our email. And here's the email that I just received. I just got three of them because we sent three to the same email. And hi, Emily. Thank you for reaching out. I appreciate your message. We'd be happy to help you find the best AI transcription tool for your podcast production. To make sure we cover everything you need, I'd like to invite you to book a quick consulting call. Here are three weekdays, time slots available this week that fall between nine to five. Right? This isn't, this is kind of extra. It's very AI like, but that's just things that we can tweak in the prompt if we'd like. And the format isn't great either. These are all things that we would just change in the prompt itself. But you get the point, right? We get the, the three different availabilities, ask in the book, and then she can respond that way. So we were able to take Excel data like this, select the ones we want to send out, click on send, and then receive our emails. Thanks for making it till the end of the video. If you want to keep playing around with this, you can definitely use Copilot on your own data set. You can add some more make.com modules. There's a lot more that we could do with this. So again, there's going to be the code and the make scenario in my school community. So check that out if you want to keep playing with it. And so with that being said, I will see you all in the next video.